الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters As Muslims Our days are either one of two We're either having times of joy And we're enjoying ourselves And we're stress free And there are days In which we're stressed And we're going through a lot of hardship Our situation is one of those two Either hardship Or ease And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He told us the situation of the believer doesn't Leave one of those two The hadith Al-Imam Muslim narrated in his Sahih Min hadith Abi Yahya Suhaib ibn Sinan Radiyallahu ta'ala anhu The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said Ajaban li amri al-mu'min Inna amrahu kullahu khayr The Prophet said fascination To the affairs of the believer All of his affairs are good Wa laysa dalika illa lil-mu'min And this is only for the believer. No one else shares it with the believer. This is unique for the believer. It is only for him. وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ صَرَّاءُ If he goes through times of joy and times of ease, شَكَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ He comes with gratitude. And this is good for him. When he goes through that time of joy and happiness, he comes with... He comes with the servitude of gratitude. And if he goes through hardship and he goes through calamities and loss of wealth and children and etc., he comes with the servitude of patience. And this is good for him. So either the times of hardship. You have to show patience. And the times of ease, you need to show shukr. This is the important question here. How can one show patience at the time of hardship? How can he be hopeful at the times of hardship? One of the ways is studying the lives of the prophets helps a person to have hope in times of hardship. And it also brings to you that tranquility and that ease. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did that in the Quran for our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he was going through hardships and calamities were coming his way, Allah would tell him a story about the Prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, Isbir ala ma yaquluna. Muhammad, be patient with what they are saying to you. Be patient with the statements that these people are using against you and the slanders and the criticism and the statements that they're saying about you be patient اصبر على ما يقولون واذكر عبدنا داود ذا الأيد إنه أواب and remember the story of Nabi Allah Dawood here Allah is telling the Prophet to be patient and to not give much consideration to what these people are saying about him and then Allah reminds him of the story of who? Allah reminds him the story of Nabi Allah Dawood. Allah also does in another place, Surah Al-Sad, Ayah 41, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَذْكُرْ Muhammad, remember, وَذْكُرْ remember, in praise and glorification, remember, عَبْدَنَا أَيُوبَ إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ Our slave, Allah Ayyub, إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ When he called unto his Lord And he said أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الشَّيْطَانُ بِنُصْبٍ وَعَذَابٍ What does this mean? أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الشَّيْطَانُ بِنُصْبٍ وَعَذَابٍ This is something I don't want to touch on now Because this is something I will be speaking about In a lecture that's coming insha'Allah ta'ala The story of all these prophets That are mentioned in the Qur'an is to remind our Prophet وسلم, and not just him, each and every one of us, that when we go through hardship, when we go through suffering, 
prophets that came before us. And they went through patience. As Allah said to the Prophet ﷺ, Be patient the way that the Ulul Azm min al Rusul, the five chosen prophets, the way that they were patient. Who were the five chosen prophets? Allah mentions it in Surah Al Ahzab. وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ مِيثَاقَهُمْ وَمِنْكَ وَمِنْ نُوحٍ وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى وَعِيسَى These five prophets, the way that they were patient through all the calamities and hardship in which they went through, also be patient like that, Muhammad. And the story of these prophets, there is in it lessons. Allah says in the Qur'an, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصٍ عِبْرَةً لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ مَا كَانَ حَدِيثًا يُفْتَرَى وَلَكِنْ تَصْدِيقَ الَّذِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَتَفْصِيلَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً لِقَوْمِ يُؤْمِنُونَ Allah says in this story of these prophets are lessons. فَهُوْ لَكِنْ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ The wise and the intellectual and the smart people, there's a lesson in it for them. The stories of these prophets. مَا كَانَ حَدِيثًا يُفْتَرَى It wasn't a made-up story. The story of Ayyub. It's not a made-up story. Nabi Allah Yunus. It's not a made-up story. Dawood. It's not a made-up story. These are real stories that took place. And in these stories, there are what? لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصٍ عِبْرَةٍ There are lessons in it. This is where us at Kelimo, we planned, we structured a course, a one-day seminar for every one of you to come and participate. I, Abdurrahman Hassan, will be speaking about benefits and lessons that one can take from the story of Nabiullah Ayyub. The trials and the tribulations, the calamities in which he went through and how he came out of it. And there will be many other things I will mention insha'Allah ta'ala, fawaid and benefits from books here and there. I advise, I reach out to every one of you who is watching this video to come and participate insha'Allah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayhi.